Last night, I flew back from a week in Costa Rica where I was attending a retreat with about 20 women, and I followed nothing on the retreat schedule other than meals. And I was being obedient to what get what God gave me to do. And I thought I'd jump on and share this in this episode of Redefining Hustle, Pursuing Success as a Christian Woman. The three lessons that I learned from going off the grid. Hey, my fellow high achieving sister in Christ. Ever wonder if it's possible to be ambitious and let God lead at the same time? Does the hustle fuel your adrenaline, but you want to ditch the overachievement and pursue success with clarity, serenity, and fulfillment? If your outward success doesn't match your inner unrest and unfulfillment, then this podcast is for you. Welcome to Redefining Hustle, Pursuing Success as a Christian Woman. I'm Erin Harrigan, a Christian wife, emptiness mom, entrepreneur, and recovering overachiever who felt those same things. When I prayed for a better way to work, God responded, let me drive. And then he led me to help women like you through my speaking, coaching, and writing. My mission is teaching you that success doesn't require buying into the world's frantic definition of hustle or into the so-called anti-hustle movement. Instead, you can meet me right here in the middle to redefine hustle as you pursue success with God as your CEO. Each week, we'll spend a focused 15 minutes connecting biblical truth to business with practical application so you can tune out the world, tune into God's truth, and turn up focus. Does that sound like what you need today? Great, then buckle up and let's go. Have you ever completely shut down? Maybe you went on a vacation and left social media apps on your phone, but you really worked hard to not click on them, to not be picking up your phone and posting a picture or seeing what was going on in the rest of the world. Have you ever taken the step to delete those off of your phone so that you could be completely shut down? Or have you ever gone off schedule? If you're a planner like me, it's it's a challenge, but have you ever chosen to go to an event, whether it was a retreat or a weekend getaway or whatever, and just opt out of the standard schedule of events? These are a couple of things that I did, and so I want to share with you these three lessons from going off the grid. First, let me tell you where my week started, the intention. So the very first night that we gathered, we all set what our intentions would be for that week. And I was mostly amongst what I would say is a non-Christian crowd, uh, various belief systems. And I said, there is a Psalm 4610 that says, be still and know that I am God. Be still is what I plan to do this week. And I said to these women, you know, normally I'm a pretty outgoing person and I really derive a lot of energy from being around people. So if you see me not saying much or you see me sitting off by myself, um, there's no need to be offended. I'm simply being obedient to what God had given me. You see, leading up to this event, I've done a lot of travel this week or this year. And this was... A, a moment in time where I felt very clearly the Holy Spirit said, this is my time with you. So he had me get a single room, which normally I would share a room with someone. Interestingly, the room that I had was a little bit off the beaten path and away from others in general. And I felt very clearly, clearly going into this week that I was to be with him to spend time with him. So in preparation for this being still so that I could know the Lord, I deleted LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook off of my phone because I I didn't want to be tempted to be checking in or posting pictures all over the place. And uh, I had decided that I would be fully quiet and listening for the Lord. So here is uh, one of the lessons that I learned. So let me start with lesson number one. Lesson number one is shutting down, getting still is a challenge and it is eye-opening for us overachievers. 
So when I say that I'm a recovering driver, striver, and achievement chaser, I am fully in the court of those who overachieve, right? If God gives me one instruction, I will say, well, gee, if I triple that, I could get triple the result. And God, I feel is generally shaking his head at me. And so this shutting down was not as much of a challenge at taking things off of my phone, but to not follow the schedule, I am a rule follower. I am a planner. I want everything in order, but to not follow the schedule and decide to opt out of that, to skip different sessions, to truly get quiet. There was one night I had a, a spa treatment and finishing that I came into the dining room where the other women were seated for dinner. And I felt very clearly as my friends were waving me over to sit with them, the Lord said, go sit by yourself, eat in silence. I am your dinner guest tonight. Ooh, it's hard for me as a social person to not conform to the schedule to not conform to the trend to go sit and find your friend and go sit with them, but to sit alone and not only to sit alone, but to sit alone in silence. Let me tell you, friends, that was the best meal I had. I chewed slowly. I savored every bite. If you're on my email list, you know that my email last week was about savoring. If you're not on my email list, go subscribe and download my four keys devotional at erinharrigan.com slash four keys devotional. I savored every spoonful of the soup. I savored every bite of the meal. I savored every sip of the wine. I slowed down and ate in a way that I can't remember doing so. So my first lesson is that shutting down for me, not following following the rules or the schedule was, was difficult, but it's also such a lesson in overachievement and understanding that I tend to follow along with the crowd, but that is not who God made us to be. Before I get to the second lesson, I want to give you another scripture. And recently I covered this in a podcast episode, which I will link in the show notes for this one. And this was Romans 12, 2. And I broke it down into three sections, but let me read it to you. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So my second lesson is this <clears throat> silence is golden and it amplifies the Lord's voice. Like the first lesson of not following along, being quiet is really hard for me. <laughs> I tend to be a talker. That said, I'm very often told, you're such a good listener, probably because I start most conversations asking about the other person. When someone schedules a meeting or a virtual coffee with me, I spend the vast majority of the first probably five or 10 minutes getting to know them before I even talk about myself or my business. So being silent, totally silent, is a real challenge for me. But what I found is in being silent, even sitting and coloring without coloring. When was the last time you colored, friends? <laughs> I took a coloring book and gel markers with me so I could sit and color. And my, my mission was to sit in all the most beautiful and quiet places among the resort areas and to be quiet. And I found that it amplified the Lord's voice. But how can we know that if we're constantly filling the noise, if we're constantly speaking and being around the people and not taking time to be with him, like it says in Romans 12 to the end of it, then you will be able to test and approve what's got, what God's will is. How can we do that if we don't get silent with him? So silence was golden for me. So much came out as I was journaling and praying. And in those very quiet moments, just coloring, listening to the pen, coloring in the, the design, he revealed so much to me about 
but about where I am and how he positions me and what I am to do next. And, and quite frankly, even in a massage, the message I heard loud and clear from him was care for my temple. In other words, we know in scripture, I think in, I know in Corinthians, it talks about that our bodies are a temple, but I haven't been taking good care of my, my temple. Yes. I've started running again. And yes, I'm coming to, to, you know, not disparage my body image, but how am I savoring? How am I eating? What am I eating? How am I taking care of this temple? When am I staying up too late and not going to bed? Or when am I not spending time with him? All of these are ways that I could only hear from him in the silence so I could know to test and approve what God's will is. So that silence is so key, friends. And I pray that you will take time in silence. It is hard for many of us to be silent. But that lesson in being silent also led me one night to skip again, something that was on the schedule for the group. And the Lord said, I want you to sit in your room and color or read, gave me the choice. I chose to color. It was, a, it was pouring down rain. And as I was sitting there thinking, this is so lonely being silent a beautiful animal called a pisote, which is like a raccoon to us in the United States, jumped up onto the balcony of my room and then got into the, the double sort of swinging egg kind of chair. And he slept and he slept there all night to stay out of the rain. And I felt, Lord, you're showing me that I'm not alone. Look at this beautiful creature that you created sitting here in full view that I get to see him and I get to smile. And it also reminded me of my dog who I was missing at home. But being in that silence, if I had gone along to be with the group, I would have missed that opportunity. The third lesson that I have for you, that I am over reaching for my phone. I'm over it. I'm over it. Because overreaching <laughs> edges God out. There is a famous um, saying by Wayne Dyer that ego stands for edging God out. And I don't know about you, but at the end of the week or, or beginning of the week, depending on how you look at the day of Sunday, I get a message on my phone that tells me what my, my weekly um, engagement, and it even tells, tells you how many times you pick up your phone. Well, because I had deleted social media, I found that I was uh, very aware and conscious of how much I picked up my phone. And then I would pick up my phone and go, well, there's literally nothing for me to check because I can check my email. I can check my texts, but I have no other social media on my phone. Why am I reaching for my phone? That overreaching that we do constantly can bring us to the awareness of edging God out and not leaving him margin. And what I realize is that I constantly reach for my phone all day long. And those moments, instead of reaching for my phone, I can be aware and set it down and say, Lord, how do you want me to spend this next 15 minutes? Do you want me coloring? Do you want me sitting in this chair behind me where I can read and commune with you? I am over reaching for my phone because that overreaching was edging God out. Friends, so many distractions in this world, so many amazing things that the Lord gives us that inner that that we take for granted or that we overuse. And what's funny is this trip came on the heels of my Bible study group walking through the Priscilla Schreier study Breathe, which is all about Sabbath. And in that she talks about how the good things of God we be, we inevitably begin to idolize or let it take up space. Like the phone in itself, the smartphone features that technology is not a bad thing. But all the ways that we make that an idol, come on. So I am overreaching for my phone because overreaching edges God out. Friends, as I bring this message to you today, I have two book recommendations for you before we close out. The first is called The Rest of God by Mark Buchanan. It was a fantastic read. I listened to it on audiobook. It's all about Sabbath and resting. And all the ways that we're, we are to rest, including how we eat, like to be eating in, in a restful way, right? 
Uh, and the second book is Sacred Rest by Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith. I just started listening to that. I love it. I'm going to be finishing up probably this week. Friends, I pray that these three lessons from going off the grid bless you. I pray that they open your eyes um, to be more aware of how shutting down and going, going off the grid or going off social media can be a challenge for you. Um, how you're overreaching is overreaching. And um, the, the challenge of being in silence, I pray that this will give you something to think about and marinate on and ask God if these are lessons that you need to learn as well and if how he would give you the space to learn them. Before we finish up, a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to have the links to those books in the show notes of, of this episode, so please be sure to do that. Number two, if you're not already on my email list, again, go grab my Four Keys audio devotional. That'll put you on the email list at aaronharrigan.com slash four keys devotional. And number three, if it is time for you to engage a coach that combines business acumen and biblical truth that can walk through this journey with you as a high achieving sister in Christ, whether in business or in the boardroom. Maybe it's time to transition out of a professional career and into your own business and you you want someone to walk alongside you or maybe you need the accountability to scale and refine your business but allow the Lord to lead you to do that that is exactly what I do I help you break free from business as usual and I can tell you that last week though I was doing no business that I did break free from rest as usual wasn't filling every moment wasn't following following the crowd uh, but being obedient and that's what he calls us to do. And friend, oh, the outcomes of that are far beyond what we could think or imagine. And I pray that for you. Until next time, I pray for and encourage you to tune out the world, tune into God's truth, and turn up focus so that you can walk out the impact that he has with your mission in the marketplace. I'll see you on the next episode. As an established solopreneur or business owner with a team of employees who's ready to refine or scale your business, you're probably swimming in opportunities, overflowing with ideas, and excited about the possibilities. But you're overwhelmed thinking, how can I set a strategy when I'm trying to run a business and be productive? There are so many ideas and opportunities. How do I decide what's worth pursuing? I don't have time to waste on things that don't align to the vision and mission that God's given me. My client, Jen, felt this way as she sought to scale her business with a God-honoring strategy. Enter my focused and fruitful strategy day. Jen said of her experience, my strategy day with Erin was just what I needed. She helped me look at my current services, dream about the future, and create a plan to grow and scale. Her giftedness as a visionary with an understanding of the day-to-day -day tactical tasks is a magical combination I've never seen before. And she approaches it all from a firm foundation of faith. My strategy day gives you a full day of private coaching with me and my strategic mapping zone of genius while being nourished with good food in a tranquil environment and celebrated for your progress at the end of the day, all in the beauty of Chesapeake Beach, Maryland, or in your location. If you want to bring calm to the chaos, tame the tornado, and silence the squirrels in your business for a clear path forward, Visit AaronHarrigan.com slash strategy day to learn more and schedule time with me. No squirrels were harmed in the making of this message or in the delivery of the strategy day. Thanks for tuning in to Redefining Hustle, Pursuing Success as a Christian Woman each week. I pray this show helps you to see that God made you ambitious, but he didn't make you to do business as usual. Remember to check the show notes for my free resources and other helpful links. If this episode spoke to you, take a screenshot, share it with a friend, or share it on social and tag me. I'm praying for you, friend, that you'll embrace redefining hustle, and in turn, your business will produce much fruit and impact his kingdom in greater ways than you could ever do in your own strength.